Welcome to another Animals at Home video. Thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully your January is going well so far. Ours up in Canada is ice cold. Just got back from a run outside and uh, it was cold. I am super excited about this video because my friend TC Houston over at the Reptile Mountain has challenged me. He has challenged me to improve the care of one of the animals in my reptile room and film it and challenge somebody else. I want you to go watch his video so you can see a full description of it, but essentially we are starting a challenge. This was TC's idea, I think it's fantastic. He made a change in his reptile room for the better of his animals and now he has challenged me to do the same. I'm gonna challenge somebody else at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around to the end. I have a couple people in mind that I'm gonna challenge to do the same and I also invite you to start this challenge as well. So in today's video, we're gonna add UV lighting to both of my bow enclosures. Now, this is something that I learned last year when I was talking to John Courtney Smith on the podcast, he told me that it is crucially important for even nocturnal animals to have access to UV. So it's been on my to-do list for a long time. If you watched my video last year when I redid my day gecko enclosure, which is just to the side here, And in that video, I actually admitted that I don't have enough money to afford to care for these animals to the high quality of care that I now know is required for them. You know, and I think many of us are probably in that situation. We sort of accumulated reptiles because they're fairly easy to accumulate and you sort of think, you know, the care is very simple, it's not very expensive, but the more I learn about proper lighting, heating, space, enrichment, I realized, holy smokes, I don't have enough money to do exactly what I wanna do with each of these animals. So what that did is A, it capped me at my animals. I have six animals, I'm not getting any more because I wanna improve the care of each one that I have. And that's exactly what the Better Care Challenge is about. It's about slowly and steadily increasing your care. It's not about running to the pet store and spending $10,000 on new equipment so I can properly care for everything. My goal is to have everything cared for properly in the future, and I'm gonna do that by slowly trickling new things into the reptile room and increasing their care. So let's get to the lighting. So for lighting, I'm using the 7% UVB Shade Dweller from Arcadia. And the reason I'm using this is because the 7% is a little bit of a weaker UV number, which is good. These are not like a bearded dragon where they're gonna be in the desert in the baking sun all day. Of course, a ton of UV probably gets filtered out or sunlight gets filtered in the rainforest just by the amount of uh, mass of trees and whatnot. And they are more of a nocturnal species, so they don't need a super high powered UV, so this is gonna be perfect. The I like this kit, I have the same one for my Cresta Gecko, it's just nice and small. There's the reflector, the bulb comes in a little box like this, it's just a 12 inch T5 uh, light bulb. So very simple to use, and of course as well, since these are boas and they're gonna mess with the light inevitably, I have this Lamp Guard Pro, also from Arcadia, that will protect the, the lamp from them smashing it in some way. And I like the Arcadia screens or the protectors because they do only reduce the light by 15%. You have to remember that whenever you're putting your lamp on top of a screen or anything like that, some of the light is not gonna make it through the screen because it's gonna hit the actual wire and bounce back. Arcadia does a great job of making sure that the mesh on their lamp guard only reduces the light by 15%, which is great. So, I do have two boas and one is already set up. You can see the lamp is in this enclosure here. I have it. I'm gonna explain why I put it where it is and everything in a second, but I just want you guys to see sort of what the end result's gonna look like. That is the lamp with the Guard uh, Guard Pro on top of it. And here's actually the boa. Now, it's not unusual for him to be out during the day, but I will say it's definitely unusual for him to be basking in that spot. So again, this is obviously an anecdotal piece of uh, observation here, but typically when he's out during the day, he's very, very active and he's motoring around or he's in his hide. I'm not sure I've ever really seen him hang out, out laying down in the ground during the day like this. And he's been there all day. It's already one o'clock in the afternoon. He's been there since eight o'clock in the morning. So another, you know, Interesting anecdote to say the least. So here's my second bowl. We'll have to see if she behaves in the same way in terms of the way she basks after I install the light. The light was just installed yesterday on the enclosure above. Now this particular snake is I'm not really sure what she is. She was a rescue. She's relatively small for a boa. I've had her for many years and um, you know boas are so hybridized and crossbred at this point that it's pretty hard to say exactly what she could be. I'm gonna open this up. So I'm trying to do my best to incorporate some choice-based care based off my conversations from the team at Reptelligence. You can listen to the podcast episode number 39 and podcast episode number 27 for more information on that. But essentially, I'm just gonna allow her to come out on her own rather than me go in there and aggressively pull her out. This could take some time, but I have some interesting things in front of her, this pet packing paper that actually came with the light bulbs and there's a hide in there. So ideally, she crawls out on her own and it'll be less stressful for her. So 
So choice-based care takes a lot of patience. That time-lapse clip that I showed took about almost 30 minutes in real time, or maybe even a little bit more. So, and I still had to help her out at the end because she was starting to go underneath the shelving unit. I don't want her to go there. So I'm just gonna take a few branches out because I wanna have a little more space to work and then we're gonna get to adding the lights. So I'm gonna try my best to sort of show exactly what I'm doing here. But the first thing to note is these enclosures are enclosures that I converted from shelving units into bow enclosures about two years ago or so. And they've done their job. I've really enjoyed using them, although they are on their way out. I'm only maybe have another three months with them and I'm getting something much better. So the way I'm setting up this lighting is gonna be slightly temporary in a way. It's not the best way to set up the light. I would prefer to set it up in a slightly different way, but due to the set configuration of the shelves and everything, and everything is permanent in here right now, I'm not gonna, I, I just wanna have the light in there so there is some UV access. The new enclosures will be much easier to light. I'll be able to add halogens to have proper infrared light and all that. I'll get into that more in a future video, but for now, we're gonna set this up to the best of my ability with the space that I have. So in the back of Arcadia bulbs, there's always this little chart that shows the UV index based off the distance from the bulb. So at, from 10 inches, you're at, you're at 0.8, and all the way up to 18 inches, you're at 0.3. Now this enclosure here is about 20 inches tall, 20 inches tall, and this, in, this shelf from the ceiling is about 10 inches. So that's kind of where I want the UV. This is the, there's heat here from the radiant heat panel. So I'd like some UV shining here, and then the rest of it will be down here, where it's about 18 inches from the bulb. So there's still some UV, and of course the shelves underneath, completely away from the UV, as well as this different compartment through that tunnel. There's no lighting over there, so they can escape the UV completely. And you do want to be somewhat careful because just like us with UV with humans, you can get sunburned very easily. You want to make sure that the primary basking spot is not going to be too close to the bulb. So I don't really want any UV on top of this shelf because it's just so close. The bulb will only be a couple inches off this surface. Now with the nature of where I'm going to have to have this on an angle just because of the way how long this is, it has to sit like this. There will be a little bit of light shining on this shelf, but really not much. The primary basking zone for the UV will be here. And I'll show you guys a really easy way to tell where the UV is shining. So this guard does come with little screws to be screwed in and also it's on a hinge, which means when you do ever need to change the bulb in the lamp underneath, you just undo those two screws and it will hinge down, which is really convenient. So I'm gonna start by putting just two screws in. Okay, so now it's time to bracket the lamp. So the Arcadia Shade Dweller, the actual reflector just snaps off just like that and it snaps back on. And then it comes with these little brackets which clip on to the light that way. Now when, you, when I got it, I was like, there's no way these things fit, they're so tight. But they do snap in, you just gotta give them a lot of effort. But I recommend not doing that until they're actually fastened because they're very difficult to get off once they're snapped on. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did pay for these lamps. It's, Arcadia did not send these to me, I just am a big fan of their light, so that's why I always use them. And they do also come with screws as well as drywall anchors, but I'm gonna use different screws because the ones they came with are just a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna take the first bracket and sort of just guess where it's in the middle there and screw this in. So now that the first bracket's in, I'm just gonna take the actual fixture and just sort of measure roughly where the second bracket's gonna need to go. Just take this permanent marker. Now that the brackets are in, it's important that I know which way I want this to face because this actually has two ports, one on this side and one on the other side, which and they look slightly different. Now this one is for a daisy chain. You can actually connect a bunch of the lights together if you want to run off one power source. And this is just for the actual power cable. They look similar, but they're not quite the same. And I want my power side to be on this end, so I'm gonna snap it in like this. And like I said, it's pretty tough to get that in, so now that it's in, it is in. It's not going anywhere. One of the last things I need to do is I'm gonna drill a hole right through the ceiling that will be inside the cage, so no worries about the snake trying to get through it. It's not a huge hole anyway, but just to feed the cable up and around into the back so it can be plugged in. I'm using these diamond-coated drill bits. It's the only hole saw I have. It's not at all what you wanna to use to drill a hole through this particle board, but it will work okay. <laughs> So 
Going to put the bulb in here. I like to wear gloves just to keep fingerprints off. So it just slides into the slots and then twist it into place. We'll test it to make sure there are no issues before I seal it up. And there we go, perfect. So I'm gonna finish closing up the cage and then uh, that's pretty much it. So as I said earlier, there's a really good trick just to simply see where your light is shining. So turn off all the lights in the room. It's best to do this at nighttime, although it does work in the day. And then click on the only light that you're concerned about. So we have the shade dweller on now, no other lights are on, and now I can get a really good idea of where the light is shining. I have the blinds closed, so I'm not dealing with the sun or anything. So you can see a ton of light down here. Underneath this shelf is completely shaded. You're not getting any UV down there. About half this shelf is getting good, strong UV. The rest of it is maybe just a little bit you know, weaker strength. And as I said, there's a little bit on this corner that's gonna be getting some good UV that's probably a little bit too close, but it's not a huge deal because she's not gonna be basking on this tiny corner here. So that works out well, and I can set the rest of the cage up and we'll see how she likes it. All right, so I've just added her back into her enclosure. She's scooting around, checking on her new light. We'll see how she reacts to it. Again, the bow up there is still basking in the middle of the floor in the open underneath the UV. Highly unusual for him to be sleeping in the open during the day. This is the first full day he's had UV. He didn't really have it for long yesterday, just an hour or two before the lights went out. So just an interesting anecdote. The other thing to remember with UV is that bulbs need to be changed every 12 months. You can't, it, the bulb will still run after 12 months. It'll still illuminate, but it will no longer produce ultraviolet rays, which I'm sure might, many of you already know. Uh, so it does need to be replaced. Arcadia has a really cool QR code on the back of all their boxes where you, if you scan that, you can sign up for an email reminder and it'll remind you in 12 months to pick up a new bulb. But anyway, enough about this. This is gonna awesome. I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on them, see how this, they react to the new bulbs. But this is all about the Better Care Challenge. And before I tell you guys who I'm personally gonna be challenging in this challenge, I wanna invite you guys to participate as well. You do not need to make a lengthy YouTube video explaining what you've done, just a 30 or 45 second clip on Instagram or Facebook, letting everybody know what animal you have and how you've enriched or, or changed the care for the better. And then of course, challenge someone. That's all you need to do, just a quick clip. Make sure you use the hashtag Better Care Challenge so we can keep track of these. This is how the industry takes responsibility for itself. And this is how we show outsiders that we actually deeply care about the welfare of the animals. If this goes viral, this would be a hugely positive effect on the entire industry as a whole. So please, please uh, consider taking part in the challenge as well. Challenge your friends and family. And again, hashtag Better Care Challenge so we can keep track of everybody. So now on to who I am challenging. Mariah from Reptophiles, Josser from Josser's Jungle, and Emma from Emzotic. You guys have been challenged by me. Good luck with it. I know you'll do something awesome. And thanks to TC Houston from Reptile Mountain for thinking of this amazing challenge. I cannot wait to see how this snowballs. I'll see you guys next time.